Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Jocelyn Briggs here. Welcome to another move session. Just getting started here. We're at the campsite. We had the biggest storm I think I've ever experienced while camping, like in my ever last night. I don't know how people in a tent do it. <laughs> hey, Corinne. Okay, let's get started. Hey, hey, say hi as you're joining. Hey, Dawn. Let's start nice and easy. <clears throat> I, the storm woke me up. It was like, I think 5 a.m. Oh my gosh, I thought the world was exploding. <laughs> and uh, I didn't know it was 5 a.m. I looked at my watch and I was like, oh, 5 a.m. I can get up, maybe it'll pass. I had my alarm set to go for a nice early run, but the world, the world was exploding, so I actually fell back asleep and then woke up at almost 8.30, which is like noon. <laughs> so if you're joining me for the first time or if you are starting from scratch, if you are a beginner, um, if you're feeling like crap, <laughs> any of those things, remember to take everything at your own pace. I'm going to start out with a nice slow gentle first round um, modify anything you need our first round is no impact you can do the whole thing no impact if you like um, you can modify anything that we're doing you can change you can change it up if you want to not just because you don't like something though like don't just say oh I'm not gonna do burpees because I hate them but if you aren't ready for something or you know you're you can't do something yet then by all means, substitute something different. Um, the purpose of these workouts primarily, first first up is to just show up. If it wasn't for you guys, I would not have shown up this morning because I'm all discombobulated because I slept in. I was actually expecting it to be an oven out here and it's actually quite nice out. I mean, it's still very, very humid, but there's a breeze amen for a breeze because <laughs> when I went to bed last night it was just as hot as it was at like noon I swear we had the air conditioning going in the trailer so our first round of warm-up is always low no impact um, the idea is that you're just moving your body you're waking your body up you are Increasing the blood flow to the muscles and the oxygen, of course, that's obviously the physiological part of the warm-up. But you're also allowing your head to, you know, adjust to the idea of what you're about to do. <laughs> you guys don't know what we're about to do because you don't know what the workout is, but when I used to do the insanity workouts, that's what I used to, I used to love the warm-ups because they're super long. They're actually as hard as the workouts, mind you. But uh, I liked them because they gave me a chance to kind of like, you know, adapt to the fact that, yeah, this is going to be hard. But hard things are good for us, you guys. Hard things are not bad. I was having a hard time finding a spot to do this today because I literally, it, it rained. Like, I thought, I can't believe my awning didn't break. That's, that was one of the reasons I woke up and was kind of a little panicked. So we're going to add a hop if you're ready to. If you're not, keep it at the low impact. I'm having one of those weeks. Let's talk about this for a second. Because, you know, the logical part of my mind, or the mind that knows better now, says it's probably the week before your cycle. <laughs> It's hot as anything out this week. Um, go with it. Just, just get through it, right? So I share that with you because you will have those days where you're like, have I ever, you know, you feel like you're progressing well. You feel like, you know, you're making progress. You're feeling pretty good about yourself. And then all of a sudden, like, it'll hit you. Either you'll feel really bloated 
or you'll roll, you'll work out, you'll feel really heavy. Dawn, you probably feel this when you run. Like where you just feel like, holy crap, have I ever ran before? And it plays with your mind. And for years I didn't understand it until uh, recently when I read a book that explained how the body works. Anyways, I'm going on day three or four now, so I'm ready. I'm ready to feel good again. <laughs> Sometimes you have to listen to your body though. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grappling with the mental voices today of whether I go for a nice long run or whether I take a rest day that I haven't had. But anyways, I'm sure you don't care about any of that, but you do care about the fact that I just want you to know when you have those days, don't attach any meaning to them. Just do your best. Remember we talked yesterday about your best one day is going to look different than your best another day. But it is day 11, no wine. And I am proud to say we, we are camping. There's no alcohol here and there's no chips. There might be some s'mores so. <laughs> though. We may have substituted something for the chips. Okay, here we go. High impact round. So take, cause we're not doing a high impact workout. So lifting those knees. My daughter is texting me furiously right now. I'm not sure what she's saying. If she was to go on Facebook, she could see. <laughs> That I'm occupied. Dixon, uh, can you text Nella? I don't have Wi-Fi. Oh, is Riley in there? No. Do you know his password? I don't remember it. So this is the high impact round, high intensity round. So you want to go as fast as you can for where you're at today. This is the sad fast as I can today. <coughs> so day 11, no chips. And as uh, chips, but That's not an addiction. <laughs> and we're camping. You gotta have some fun, right? You gotta have some treats. But no alcohol. I considered bringing coolers because I cut out wine, not coolers. And I was like, nope. I brought my phytonutrient turmeric tea instead. <laughs> Can you text Renelle and tell her I'm teaching a workout? Because she's phoned me twice and texted me like three times. Huh? I did. Oh, you did already? Yeah. Oh, I was talking to Riley. <clears throat> Woo. The sun is coming out and I really would rather it stay overcast. I don't know about you all. Some of you might have a pool and, and be loving this heat. <clears throat> remind me, Kathy, if you're on there, remind me in the winter about this period of time in the summer. I'm over the heat. I would love to put on a sweater right now because <laughs> it was cold. Woo, okay, warm up is done. Who is with me? Who is working out with me this morning? Oh, hey, hey, Kathy, you are. So remind me when it's a million below, because I also hate the cold. I'm not a fan of this, of this heat. I, I do not have a pool. Oh yes, he's very tall. <laughs> I think he's six feet now. He's six feet. Riley, Heather says you're tall. All right, so grab, you're gonna need um, a bench again because we're gonna be doing those rows that we do a lot. I have my trusty cooler. I was gonna use the 
picnic table, but everything is so wet. I literally thought my awning was going to break last night. I know you're supposed to put your awning in. I actually didn't know that. Hey, Corinne. Yes, I knew you were there. Corinne is really close to me. I'm in Corinne's neck of the wood. For a little company while I'm doing some board work. Heather's keeping, having us keep her company. Okay, so <clears throat> we don't need the bench yet. We need some weights. All right, you guys ready? Let's do this. Let's do this. Going into a <clears throat> excuse me squat with three bicep curls two three okay remember when you're squatting you're sitting back your butt is back and your chest is up so you don't want to be leaning forward these are already not fun <laughs> two three we're working arms today but I threw in some squats. Two, three, one, two, three. Okay, that's it for that one. Uh, oh, I need my mat. Okay, we're gonna, uh, you're gonna need a pair of weights for this one. How fast I am at transition today. Okay, we're doing a press. A single press. Single arm. Single arm. Double. You can, if you want, to change this up, but maybe we'll do it both ways. Single, single, double. Pull that core in. <clears throat> Pull that belly button in. Single double. Has anybody started to increase your weight yet? Single, double. Yep, the sky is clearing. The sun is coming out. Okay, next up we're doing, so you're going to grab like a single weight for the next one. We're going to do a press plus a skull crush, scroll crusher. Can you guys see me okay, hopefully? Okay, so you're gonna press, skull pressure. Press. So again, keep that belly button pulled in. Keep those elbows, especially in the skull crusher, narrow. Right, like try not to widen them. You're pressing and then you're back. That's, a, that's for your triceps, press. up with the weight. So you want to keep the weight straight, like think of lifting the weight up into the sky. Slow and controlled, like don't, don't rush these, especially you want to lift and then lower gently. Lift and lower gently. Lift with your core. Someone needs to count reps for me, so we know if we have to do more at the end <laughs> for our 100 core. This is the last one, and then we get a little break, and then we do this two more times. All right, so we have a little break before doing two more rounds. How is everybody doing? Can you guys see me okay? Yes, you ink. Whoa! You guys so awesome. Increase the weight. So have... 
like what I like to do is have a heavier weight and try it right and and you know you can always drop back down or sometimes you'll even get like a couple of reps like halfway through the set with the heavier weight and then you can drop down don't forget to grab a drink I'm gonna adjust this a little bit here just my little setup here <coughs> How's everybody doing? All right. You guys ready for the squats again? Oh, Lord, help us. All right, let's go. Grab your weight. Knees are out over the toes. One, two, three. Remember to use your core. So pull that belly button in. One, two, three. Notice my spine is an extension, which means I'm cocking that butt, which means that my spine is protected. Oh my gosh. Let's just do a set of bicep curls. My heart rate is like just insane this week. Maybe my body's missing wine. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> Maybe my body's adjusting to the lack of, uh, I don't know, what's in wine that my body could be missing. Maybe I'm missing antioxidants. Okay. Press, alternate, alternate, press. If you want, you can lift that butt up. One, single, double. Okay, focus on that chest and press from the back, right? We forget to use our back. Kind of like think of retracting those shoulder blades so that you're not curving, but push from your back muscles. You're, you're going to be using your shoulder muscles, no, or sorry, your shoulders and your chest muscles. But if you can intentionally use your um, pressing from your back as well. A, you can use more muscles in the movement, which means you can go up and wait sooner. But also, we want to get used to when we do a movement, using our entire body. Okay, so we're going to press. And the reason for that, well, first of all, it's functional. Like, when you walk around the world, you don't isolate when you lift up some milk, you know, from the grocery from the refrigerator at the grocery store, like you don't isolate your bicep curls, the biceps to do so, right? Like you, you use your whole body. So, but if you get used to in, in lifting and in your workouts, like I'm pulling my core in right now, using my core right now. Oh my God, that wind is like heaven. I should have gotten up and ran this morning while it was overcast. Okay. And then lastly, we're going to do those presses, press ups. Okay, I'm going to try the heavier weight this time, you guys. I'm going to try this guy this time. Um, when you get used to using your core, you know, all of your muscles in a movement, when you lift that milk, you're less likely to throw at your back because you're more likely to intuitively use your core to stabilize. So when you're working out, you want to kind of get used to it. It's same with some of you play, I know Betty and Corinne both play golf. You know, my, my sons play baseball. One of the key things from working out is learning to use their core and their hips in movements that, you know, intuitively you would use your upper body, right? Like you think hitting, throwing is upper body, but really the power comes from the core and the hips and sometimes the legs even. Um, whew. Okay. I want to do those squats again, you guys. <laughs> but when we want, when we don't want to do something, it's usually like the exact thing that we need to do, isn't it? Isn't it? 
Alright, so we're going to do them. We're going to like them. You guys might not mind them, but I'm not loving them. Oh, yes. Steal them back from your daughter. <laughs> or borrow them. Yeah, because you'll stop you'll stop your progress if you don't. Like you'll you'll um stunt your progress because your body needs adaptations and you want to get stronger, right? So that is the point. <clears throat> you want to build more muscle. Um building more muscle, the more muscle we have, the more calories we burn at rest, right? And the more um the, you know, the leaner your body composition is, right? Because you have more muscle taking up the space than the, the fat, right? So, okay. All right. On that note, here we go. Here we go. <sighs> Squat. One, two, three. Those of you doing the Grand Slam can rest assured there will be no well sits. Two, because this is essentially what this feels like to me, and I loathe. Although, as I say that, some of you might be thinking, oh, Jocelyn, if that's what you hate the most, maybe you need to do that more. <sighs> Very likely I do. One, two, three. Okay, one more. One, two, three. Okay, those are done. So they should probably make their way into my routine at some point soon, but, and they will, because I just told you guys, <coughs> and Kathy's listening right now. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, so we're supposed to be alternating. One, alternate, two, both. Alternate, alternate, both. So I'd love to know in the comments, obviously like right, not right now because you're doing chest presses, but your habit, those of you who are doing the 90 day habit challenge with me, has it, how has it posit positively affected or surprised you so far? So um, when you start, it's hard, right? Like, in, and that's not a surprise. That's fairly anticipated. Okay, so you start your... Okay, so press, skull pressure. You know, so, so initially it's like, it's no surprise, right? Like, you're like, you battle it every night or, or whatever it is that you're doing. Or maybe if you're adding something in, you know, you have to try to remember it. If you have omitted something, and you know, Heather has omitted, I think chocolate, I think she said. I can't remember, but um, I'm not sure. I know Kathy is stretching every day, I believe, or rolling, or yoga, something like that. Okay. We have our presses and then we go on to our second set. So for me, I mean, I did know why no chips a couple months ago, so it's different this time. It's easier this time. Interestingly, uh, the, I think because it's 90 days, here's what happened in my head. Because it's 90 days, I had to let it go and think about other things, right? Because 90 days is a long time. 30 days, it's like the countdown was on from day one, right? Like, so when I did the 30 day challenge, no wine, no chips, kind of the whole time I was thinking, okay, 25 more days, 24 more days, you know, and I had scheduled a charcuterie order to go with my special bottle of wine that I bought after 30 days of wine. This time, you know, I'm not going to really do that for 90 days because it's too far out. So I had to find, interestingly, to find something else to focus on. And I decided to kind of take my health to the next level, which was why I was doing the no wine. And all of a sudden I started setting 
these personal goals that really a week prior had no zero interest in setting and my mind just kind of went down this whole new path of, of possibilities and opportunities for me you know in this 90 days with no wine like it sounds crazy I know okay you're gonna need your bench for this next one I'm just grabbing my cooler too early it might be too early because again this is my second round I mean initially I was just trying to think of 30 days at a time right so it was really just in the one month but then I thought what can I do with this out of my life what can I bring into my life getting up early going to bed early was the first thought right I don't know hey Sharon so I'm just curious if you've had any kind of revelations yet or surprise changes. It's been surprisingly easy, even last night. Although I will say, we started on a week with my husband at work and it's always easy when my husband's at work. When my husband's off, I feel like it's holiday time and I feel like I need deserved treats and, and whatnot. Okay, we're going to our rows. Okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go. So we're on our on our cooler, on our bench, on our table, whatever you have. Oh, that breeze. And I agree, Heather, like it hasn't really, it's like, the thing is, I guess it's interesting because with 90 days, I think, okay, I can't think of the whole chunk. I just have to think of 30 days at a time. And I just have to think of maybe one week at a time. And I didn't, one of the things that I didn't do purposely was look at, okay, what do we have scheduled or planned in our life in the next 30 days or 90 days? Like anniversaries. And I thought, no, because I mean, that just can't affect things like this, right? Like you can't say, and this is one of the, the I think, mistakes that we make. So we always say, well, I'm going to start my diet, you know, after my birthday, which is in a week and a half. Oh, I'm going to start my changes after I go to that my sister's wedding or whatever right but that's not real life mm. like, real life is always gonna have I mean here's an example we get invited over to a barbecue right and all of a sudden you're like you're showing up as the non drinkers or you're showing up as the you know oh, I'm not eating that type of food right now you have to plan for that you have to adapt but if you if you try to make these changes here's the thing if you try to make these changes and avoid those situations you're essentially subconsciously not planning on sticking to those changes are you because you're trying to do them without life happening and so And so what you need to do is almost, it's almost like being in denial. And then when those things, cause inevitably things are going to come up and then you have no recourse and you panic and then you abandon ship and there's the cycle of, I don't want to say failure, but okay. Not today. Not today. <laughs> Mummy's not strong today. <laughs> Mummy's doing her best for today. And today's best is not the best. Okay, now we're doing Russian twists with a press. <laughs> so, I, my husband, Make sure that chest is up, that back is straight. Uh, my husband, when we were sort of talking about this 90 day thing, 
90 days is, is because we go to Mexico in 90 days. Anyway, he said, oh, what, what do we have between now and then? Like what events or whatever, what barbecues, what? But he, I thought he was trying to make excuses. He was actually like, no, I got to wrap my head around it. And, you know, like we have this one set of friends that we hang out with. Well, we always have beverages when we go over there. So they actually, she doesn't drink really. So it's not, you know, it's just change, right? It's just, it's just stepping into a new version of yourself. And you have to adopt that identity before you can successfully maneuver through situations that your old self like lived in, right? If, if you don't sort of adopt that new identity, your old self will struggle to adjust, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So, in my mind, <laughs> I've adopted the identity of my old self. Um, sometimes I, I look in the mirror and I go, oh shoot, like that, you, I forget. Like I've, I'm in that, in my mind, that's, I'm so convinced that that's who I am now. And it's like, when I studied mindset training with um, Bob Proctor's course called Thinking Into Results. Okay, we're back to Rose. <laughs> that was one of the things that they, <clears throat> you have to do. You have to take on the identity of the person that you're trying to become before you become that person. Because you're, the actions you take are going to be from the, the person that you see yourself as. So if you see yourself, like you ladies probably have adopted the identity of, hey, I work out two stupid with the type of people who are in alignment with the person I'm trying to become. So I, whew, when I used to run a lot, when I used to train a lot and I wanted to be, you know, a really strong ultra runner, I used to listen to podcasts all the time. So literally the people that I was, you know, listening to and taking in, because we are influenced from, by, by those around us or those that we spend time with, like 100% we are. What are we doing? We're doing tricep extensions. So it is very hard to become something that goes against the people that you spend your time with. So if you spend your time with people who drink, it's very hard to not drink, right? If you spend your time with people who don't drink, it's very hard to be a drinker. Uh, smoking, fitness, right? So you don't have to physically be around those people to become them. You know, you can watch YouTube videos, right, of, of people who golf. I don't know why I keep talking about golfing. I guess because Corinne and Betty. Okay, two more, you guys. One more. One, two more. Two. <laughs> okay. Oh. Anyone else poop today or is it just me? Like I am, I don't know why, I've been sleeping like just amazing. Oh, amazingly. You wanna be an amazing business person, right? If you're building a business, 
which has been my focus the last couple years. All my time, picture air quotes around that, is with people who are building a business, whether it's my mastermind, whether it's my team, whether it's podcasts, trainings, YouTube videos, conferences. <sighs> okay, one more round. So think about your goals right now. Think about your, Heather, this would be really important for you, I think. If, especially when you're torn between like two worlds, right? Like you have a really high demanding job or job that you know that you're really passionate about you pour yourself into <clears throat> how can you surround yourself with the voices of people doing the things that you want to do so that you can absorb their identities which sounds like being a poser but the thing is you're absorbing the identities of the people you're around whether you like it or not like you just are <sighs> so my goal for next year is, is an ultra running goal and I have not stopped watching videos about some of the races that I'm looking at that I want to do like I just can't stop so my mind that identity is seeping into me and I really think that's one of the reasons that you know changing changing up my habits has been so easy because I didn't used to have those bad habits when I was that person or that version of me, right? Anyway, it's just, it all, the mind never ceases to amaze and fascinate me, honest to goodness. It really, the more you study the mind and the more you kind of observe its power over the ways that people behave and, and show up and, and act and how they make decisions, um, the more you really realize that there's two components to who we are. There's our spiritual self and really our body is, again, we talked about this yesterday. It's just a physical thing that we live in. Moved through the earth, through, through like, you know, from our mind, our, our fears, our beliefs, our desires, our goals. So when you adopt that identity, right? So in your mind, you're like, I'm this. And then you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, <laughs> no, I'm not actually. Um, but that's where you're going. I feel like there's this, I just had an aha moment. There's this feeling of rushing, not rushing, this feeling of urgency to get there, right? So my coach used to explain it like, you adopt this new identity of yourself, right? You see yourself in the way that you want to that you want to become, right? So you're becoming whatever it is, your whatever your goal is. Maybe you're becoming an amazing golfer, and then you go out golfing, and you're like, <coughs> no, I still suck. And and you're it's almost like if you. She used to say that she was so good at I can't think of the word. There's a name for it. Um, Anyways, she was so good at it that she would look around her surroundings sometimes and almost be like, like, where am I? What? Because <laughs> this isn't who I, who I am, right? Anyways, I get that now because I think every day is a chance to get closer because I'm aware of the fact that I'm not there yet. And so the motivation to make the right decisions comes from the desire to get there quicker right like 
in a sense you think every time so let's let's compare it to paying off debt right you're paying off debt you're paying off debt and then you know you deserve a treat every now and then but you also know that that's taking you a step in the wrong direction of where you want to go so when you're really convinced you are that person you're less likely to have those slip-ups because you're you're legitimately in a like in this it's a positive rush to get there because you're like I don't know I don't know if I'm making any sense but in my head I am okay where are we at so we did our squats I think we did our core uh, we need to do our boat our plank okay hang on I'm just gonna set my timer here our push-ups and our burpees I have a good analogy runners runners you'll you'll get this and you'll laugh and this happens so often I can't even tell you okay let's start with let's start with plank <laughs> this happened recently to a friend of ours you sign up for a race you're all excited you sign up for a marathon a half marathon and the next day you feel like you have to start doing triple the amount of running that you're doing today because in your mind now you're seeing your even even if your event is six months or a year away <laughs> you're in a hurry to get to being that person flipping over to boat so do you know what I'm saying all right so we had a friend who and, and honestly like I'm not picking on anyone because I had the same instinct okay I gotta I gotta like start running longer okay well my event is not until next August <laughs> so I, I don't I have a year to build up I don't need but there's that instinct to like jump ahead to become the person and then usually what happens in the running world is is the person gets injured because <laughs> they doubled the, they doubled their mileage for an event they're doing six months from now okay push-ups let's go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Whew. I think we just have burpees. Okay, we did push-up squats, jumping jacks, plank, boat, core, let's do our 10 burpees. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, one more. Ten. Well, that was a rough one for me today. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for keeping me oh, going. Don't forget. Think about who you are becoming. Who are you becoming? Um, have an awesome day. We'll see you tomorrow.